Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you happen to be new, my name is Emily and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I took this catch-all space and turned it into a beautiful functional mudroom for my family. I love to do DIY projects to my home and I was really excited to tackle this area of the house. We have been here for a few months and it is winter time now and I am so ready to have this space be functional and I'm really excited to be partnering with Lamps Plus for today's video as well. So with that said, we're going to get started. The first thing I needed to do was to remove the back baseboard because I got some cabinetry in and I wanted to make sure it sit flush to the wall. Now I did not remove the side baseboards because I actually have a piece that will attach to the wall and then I have countertops going in so that wasn't going to affect anything. The next step for me was to mark the studs on the wall. I'm using a stud finder for this. You could do it the old fashioned way. It's completely up to you. Then where those studs were marked, I took my measuring tape and measured on the inside of the cabinet. That way I could mark where the studs were on the inside of the cabinet so I could pre-drill into the cabinet and the wall and then use my screws to secure it to the wall. That way the cabinet doesn't move. Now I did not have the cabinetry go all the way across because I wanted to leave room for a bench. The cabinet people actually were able to take an upper cabinet like you would put above a fridge and they made it without doors and without a top. That way I could put a seat on it. That way it would be functional for my kids to sit on it and use it to put the shoes on and off, etc. So I just used this clamp to clamp the two cabinets together and then again I pre-drilled into the two making sure it went into the other cabinet as well and then I screwed that together and then I put a piece in between the cabinet and the other cabinet because it wasn't level um, and secured those together. Now I am cutting the kickboard that goes on the base of the cabinet and I am going to be attaching that with my 18 uh, gauge DeWalt nailer. I really love this thing. I have to use a compressor. They do sell um, battery operated ones. It's completely up to you what you want to use. Now that that step was done, um, it was to go to the finishing touches for the cabinet tree before the countertops went in. So I ended up getting this side panel here that matched the cabinets, marked that off and then had it cut down to the right size so that the cabinet would look finished. Then to attach it to the cabinet, I used liquid nails and then finished it off with my nail gun. Then I repeated basically the same process. I put the board up that was going to be for the bench, measured that out and then measured out for the notch there. And then I secured that from the bottom, screwing it up into it. And this is how it looks. It's come together really nicely. Now it's time to put the statement piece in the room, which is my light fixture that I got from Lamps Plus. I am so excited to be partnering with them for today's video. If you've never visited their store or site, you are missing out. It's definitely a must. I will have everything linked down in the description box below, including this light fixture that I picked up from there. I'm changing out the ugly boob light and putting in this beautiful modern light fixture. They have so many styles and options to choose from, whether you are glam, modern, far farmhouse, rustic, contemporary, they have you covered. And I like the fact that everything comes with it, including instructions, makes the installation super easy. So if you want to change the look and tone of any room in your home, get a new light fixture. It's like jewelry for your home. Literally it is. And it's such an easy way to update your space. But before I show you how gorgeous it looks in the room, we have a few other projects to work on. I went to the hardware store and got two sheets of this wood and had the guys cut it down to six inches. You could do eight or ten. It's completely up to you how you want your shiplap to look. Then I took my sanding block and sanded down all the edges because it's quite splintery. If you don't and you don't want to get that in your finger, it'll hurt. So I did that and then I laid out all the boards and I actually primed them in the garage. That way the house wouldn't smell. So I just got some regular primer and primed all the boards once and then I went with regular white paint to finish it out and then I will finish painting them inside the room at the very end. 
Now the items that you'll need to put up your shiplap wall that I used were tape, a level, a scraper, spackle, nickels, a measuring tape, a nail gun, and a compressor. It's completely up to you how you want to do this, but I find the best way is to do one board at a time. So you're going to take your first measurement at the base of your wall and then mark that down and you're going to go and cut that board. You don't want to cut multiple at a time because walls are never straight in a home and they can be off up to a half an inch. And that sounds crazy, but if any of you have ever worked on DIY projects in your home, you know what I'm talking about. Then I went ahead and marked all the studs on the wall. That way I knew that when I nailed my boards into the wall, they'd be going into a stud, which is what I wanted them to do. So I started off by putting my board up. Then I took two nickels and put that on the side that had the, um, the cabinet tree. Then I put my level up, made sure it was level, and then I just nailed away, putting two in each board, top and bottom. And then I went down and put one on each stud. And now you can glue this to but I didn't find that that was necessary for this project in particular. I just basically repeated the same process I did for the first board. I moved the nickels down the board, nailed it into the wall, took my measurement for the next piece, and then marked that on the board that I had outside, cut it again, and then repeated the process. Went all the way up the wall till I finished. For the lower part of the wall, I just repeated the same process I did for the upper part of the wall. I took the scrap pieces of board that I had left over, marked it, and then I also measured, then took it outside and cut it down as I needed, added my nickels in, and then just nailed it to the wall and repeated that. The next step was to fill in all of the nail hole marks on my boards. So I went in with spackle. You could also use wood filler for this. Both work just fine. I went ahead and scraped off any excess that was on the boards. And then I went in with my sanding block and sanded it down smooth. That way when I go to paint, it'll be nice and you won't even notice I'd put any nails in the boards. But before I did that, I wanted to make sure I got all the sanding dust out, so I took my Dyson vacuum and vacuumed up all the lines. Then I wanted to also add a shelf onto the wall, so I just made sure that I measured that properly, and then I cut out one by twos for the sides and also used a one by two for the back. And you can see I'm trying to figure out where I want it on the wall. Once I figured out the height, I went ahead and used my level to make sure it was good to go. I put one nail in the middle and then I worked my way down each side adding two on each board. That way if I needed to tweak it up and down I would be able to. But make sure that baby's level. Also make sure that you get it into some studs. I used a two inch nails for this but you could also screw this in. It's completely up to you. The next step was to sand down my shelf board. I used 80 grit for this and just gave it a nice smooth finish. That way it would be ready to go for some paint. I went ahead and primed it and then painted it just like I'm going to do here to the walls. The upper ones I did not prime and so I am priming those first and then I will go in with a fresh coat of white paint. Now the next step was to finish the sides of my drywall. So I use DAPS latex silicone for this. You could use trim pieces of wood if you wanted to. I actually bought it, but I wanted to see how this looked first. And I really liked it. I felt it finished the wall really nicely and it worked really well. So I went with a bead down and then I used my finger to smooth it out. This is the type of board you could use. It's very thin. It's in the trim aisle at the hardware store. I ended up using this for the side of the cabinet because silicone would not fill it in because the depth of the cabinet was different. Once I had that up and I let it dry for a good 20 minutes, then I went in with the same paint I used on the walls and just painted over the trim. And this is how it looks. I am so glad I went all the way up to the ceiling. I thought I would just stop at the shelf part, but I'm glad I did not. Then I'm now adding my shelf in that is painted and I got it nice. It's flush with the trim pieces and now I'm going to add the front trim piece. This is optional, but I think it makes for a nice clean look. So I went ahead and just nailed that on to the secured pieces and I'm making sure that it's flush on the top. That's why you see me wiggling my fingers there. Then I went ahead and just filled in all the holes with the spackle and painted over them so that they would be a nice seamless look. 
Now it's time for the really fun part of decorating the room and adding all of the finishing touches to make the space look beautiful and give it its full makeover. I went ahead and added a couple hooks to the wall, added some eucalyptus and a vase. I kept everything really neutral in the space. Greenery definitely livens it up. I took these wicker baskets that I've had for a while and added two of them and I wanted to see how that looked with the light fixture, which I do like, but the space was felt a little bit wide. So I had this cotton sign and I added that to the space as well. And then I still felt like it needed to be shifted over a little bit. Three baskets didn't look right, so I added the candlesticks in. Then I added this mirror that I made years ago. I'll leave that video tutorial link down below for you. And now to remind you what the room looked like just a few days ago, a blank, boring catch-all space. And now it is a beautiful modern farmhouse mudroom that is absolutely beautiful to look at, but is also functional for my family. And I could not be prouder with the way this makeover has turned out. I hope that I have inspired and motivated you to pick up a tool and make over a room in your home. I really do enjoy making these type of videos and showing you guys how you can do it on a budget as well. So please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you are new. I am so excited to tackle more areas in the house. I will have more videos linked down below in the description box for you to get more ideas from. And I'm loving the iron fixture from Lamps Plus. It just makes the room look so beautiful and they are an amazing resource with a wide variety of styles and looks to choose from. So make sure to check them out. They'll be linked down in the description box below along with everything else I use in this video for you to go shopping. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you again so much for being here and watching and I will see you all in the next one.